My name is Libby Gerber and I'm the visual artist for the Roundtable project here at Paris Middle School. So this project at Paris Middle School is really exciting actually because essentially what we have done is created a play and we have created a play in all of the aspects that that would include. We started our partnership with the museum to develop a history of Redondo Beach about public spaces and the use of public spaces. So we started with Veterans Park as a place that's transitioned over time from one type of culture into what we have today. So we, our students, made a play that shows the timeline and the progression of the history of Redondo Beach. Let's go. All right, you exit, Indians get up. All right, okay, all right, now you walk on. So we broke the students up into four kind of subgroups after we had all together done research and visited places around our city. Then we decided to have writers write the play, actors act out the play, set design to visualize for us the, the scenery, and then the technology portion was to get all the pictures and the programs and all that extra support to make a play happen. It's kind of an enormous project that involves lots of different people collaborating in many different kinds of ways. The group that I was working with was the scenic or the set designer, so we basically created this huge um, piece of fabric that was painted. It was a big mural that was sort of the backdrop to the play. In order to create the backdrop for the play, we really wanted the students to get a sense of the place that they were actually painting. So this play is about um, Veterans Park, which is a really important part of Redondo Beach's history. So we took the, the kids actually on a field trip to that site so they could get a sense of it. Although they've all been there before, it's really different to observe a site as an artist who's planning on recreating it in paint or in any other medium, actually. But we really wanted them to look at it with a critical eye as an artist who's going to recreate it in some kind of way. So we walked down there, spent an afternoon there. We took notes, um, made sketches, really talked about um, how you know it was different from an actual image that we were working with. So we really started with that experience of actually being in the place that they were going to be painting. All right, you guys, why do you think we came down here today? Like, what do you think about is what is different from looking at this and being here? What to you is the most interesting thing about this place? This is a, a an objective kind of document of what it looks like, but you all experience it in a different way. When you're creating a piece of art about a place, you want to get a sense of it, and that comes from um, exploring it in many senses and spending time there, observing how it's used, um, seeing what it actually feels like to be there other than, you know, thinking about it from memory or from a photograph or from, you know, a video clip or something like that. But actually to get the chance to experience it and to do drawings from life so that when they're drawing the library, for example, they're looking at the library itself and seeing the way the shadow hits the library at different times of day and the relationship between the library and the buildings around it and, you know, things like that. So they can actually get a sense of the real place. While they were carrying all of the knowledge about the site, we needed a practical way of sort of implementing this backdrop. So what we first did is we had this printout and we created a grid on top of the photograph. So once we had that grid, each student was assigned a section and from that section, they basically enlarged it onto the size of the actual backdrop and then did a freehand drawing onto the backdrop, but you know, five times larger than the actual, you know, small drawing that they started with. Then they started painting. And the painting process was a little, rather than having each student paint their section, they worked together more sort of freely. So there might be a couple of students who painted the sky, which was a very kind of massive part of the mural. And then another student or two who might do the grass. You need to talk to the person who has the bottom of the trunk and the top, so you use one color for the whole thing. Middle school students are really hard to read and definitely harder to predict. So they were running all over the place and it's all hyper after school excitement. And then they all together figured it out and measured out things and talked to each other and made in a huge, huge space, got 12 middle school kids to figure out how they needed to work in order to get things to look how they all collectively agreed it should look. So why don't you just make um, the roof here go higher? Hey, is this enough for the dress? <laughs> I think 
it's going to be perfect, you guys. With these kids working on, on this project, which is really kind of the history of Rodano Beach, has been really interesting for me because I've learned a lot about this community that I never knew before. I had always kind of thought of it as just another suburb of Los Angeles when actually it was one of kind of the first developments yeah. on the California coast. So that was really interesting to learn that it is a site with a really rich history. Okay, we'll go to the top of Act 2 on the bench. My name is Jarrell Santiago and I teach 8th grade language arts and one class of theater arts. Okay, come on, move, move the bench, put it back in place. Okay, as soon as they're in place, all right, you exit. I always do a play every year and I said, oh, what we should do is we should have them write a play <laughs> with budget cuts. I never have any money for the, my theater productions, so I always have to, you know, really scavenger for money. So I was thinking, oh, um, we won't have to pay for our royalties because our students will write it. The writing process, it's taken, I think, three times as much time as we thought because they had to take all this research they had done and they, and they had to hone in on one area. And that's why we picked Veterans Park because we realized that that was a space that had changed over time so we could use that space. What we did is um, we wanted to go through different parts of the history. So we used a traditional flashback and so we start at the park in the present day, and an old man comes in, he kind of flashes back. I'm Cole Greenbaum, and I am in seventh grade. It's a shame this library has to be taken down. It's over 75 years old, practically a landmark. This library is the home of great scholarship and memories. Can I see that book? I want to show you something. Of course. I play Dominguez, who is this old man who has lived through the 1900s of Redondo Beach, and, um, He's really interesting because he knows a lot about Redondo Beach history and he tells his new friend, Trent, about it. And he flashes back to uh, when Henry Huntington built the Hotel Redondo. I'm Alejandro Cavetto. I'm in seventh grade and I play Henry Huntington. Fellow friends, I, Henry Huntington, am pleased to announce the opening of several new attractions, including the wonderful Hotel Redondo. He's a big deal, I guess. Who wouldn't want to live or visit Redondo Beach? Now let's all go down to the beach. We're having our very first bathing beauty contest. There's another flashback to the, the Depression era when the Hotel Redondo closed. Then um, a flashback to when the breakwater was built in the 50s. And then um, present day. We covered a lot of uh, period of history. And the kids, I was amazed they really did a good job of the script. We had three writers and um, they divided it up, the history, and it really came together really nicely. I think for seventh graders, I th and I think one is even a sixth grader, I think they did a really good job of writing. I learned about the Native Americans that used to live here and the Dominguez family because I was never really too sure on what happened with that. So I was really interested to f figure out what happened with that. Wow, what else happened? A lot, believe me. Yeah, there's a few kinks we have to work out, but I think we're pretty much ready. I'd definitely rather do this than sit in the classroom reading out of the textbook. This is fun. I got to interact with people. I got to go down to histor historical sites. And I got to go to the museum, which is really fun. It was a really interesting process and really surprising to the adults to see, you know, middle school kids put their minds together and with all their enthusiasm and excitement actually make something happen. It's really exciting and very um, inspiring for the future. <laughs> To work with children that want to learn, that are here because they have a great desire, it's so gratifying. It's, it's like we would bring the tables together, the desks together, and we'd work as colleagues. And it wasn't us, it wasn't the teacher forcing information and saying, you must learn this, learn this, it's important to learn it. It was talking about it and saying, well, what about this and what about that? So I can tell you it was a pure joy. Uh, we haven't gotten paid as teachers to do this, but it's been a complete joy because as a teacher, this is why we're teaching, because we want to work with kids who are interested in learning. So it's, uh, you know, it's been a blessing for me. Teaching history out of a book is pretty challenging as a teacher to make it seem interesting or relevant at all. And this project really gave the students a great opportunity to take their history and make it come alive. They, they picked the spot, um, they had one picture and a photograph, and they painted it and have added a story to it and are acting out what 
what no book could tell them. And we looked at books and the beginning of the research was so dry and almost tedious and it was hard to get them excited about what they were doing, even though the adults all thought it was great. But when it came down to the, the performance and the art aspect of it and them being creative and taking what they know and making their vision come to life was fantastic and an experience they definitely won't forget. Learning as project-based learning is is the way to go. You know, we can we can see it uh, when you have students who are involved in how they learn and what they learn and really accessing their higher order thinking skills by designing a program and having it be completely authentic to something that that is theirs. So these students can say the research was theirs, they can say um, the end product was theirs, and they can be completely proud of what they've done. Here are kids that are so used to just reading information in a book or filling out a worksheet or filling in the blank that that they really stepped up to the task of having to create and they made something from nothing. I'm a huge fan of project-based learning. I don't think kids learn from reading in a book, especially history. I mean when you ask kids at the beginning of the year what their least favorite subject is, it's always history because they think it's boring. And when you can do projects where they're making connections and they're seeing the personal side of history, where they're looking at the actual people that did things and created things and left pieces of themselves behind, they find themselves in the history of where they came from and why they do the things that they do or why they're even sitting in a classroom learning different information. They're attached to it and they remember it for a much longer time.